a sound cut from the Jackson's new Victory album featuring Michael Jackson and Mick Jagger singing A State of Shock. And that's exactly the state of mind employees at Specs Record Store were in when only a few people showed up this morning to get their free applications to the group's upcoming concert in Jacksonville. We expect a bigger scene than what's shown up so far. I don't know how many we have. I know we have a couple thousand. They're distributing them throughout Specs stores in South Florida. Hey, are they really hard to get? Yes, they are. A lot of uh, the people that get them are going to be lucky. Luckily, she didn't have to wait very long. Steve Conza drove all the way up from Key West to pick up his application. I was expecting thousands of people to be here this morning and drove up from the Keys so it'd be here early. And I asked Camelia Henson what she'd do for a chance at tickets to next month's concert. Anything, anything. I'm going to try anything to get a ticket because I've never seen them in person before. Eric Schutz wasn't quite that enthusiastic, but he showed up just the same. Actually, I wouldn't go very much farther than this. Spex is giving away 5,000 applications, and once you get yours, here's what you do. First, fill out the order form with your name and address. You must buy four tickets to qualify, which will cost you $120. Then send in the application with a money order and cross your fingers while you wait for a computer to randomly pick the winning forms. Even if your application is selected, you won't be notified until two days before the concert. I guess only a true blue Michael Jackson fan will put up with those conditions. Lisa Gregorish, News 4. It started out slowly, just like a typical junior prom. The boys were on one side, the girls all the way on the other. Women, women, women! <laughs> That's all any of these servicemen could think of. After all, it isn't every day they're surrounded by the most beautiful women in the world. As the sun grew hotter, the ice melted, and the language barrier, well, it almost disappeared. So far, there's a slight barrier, but not too much. I'm trying to understand everybody, and everybody's trying to understand me. Now, somebody, this is a one-in-a-lifetime deal for most of the guys here from the Coast Guard, Navy, or Marines. And I'm pretty sure, you know, the, the pictures we take, snapshots, uh, we probably remember forever. For most of these foreign beauties, this is their first real encounter with an American man. Let's find out just how they rate. But they're, they're nice. They're, they're handsome. I like their body. <laughs> they're sincere. And uh, they're very gentle. They're very talented. They have a special, you know, way about them. They're neat. <laughs> I didn't come here for the men. I could have sworn she said she wasn't interested in American men. For many of the girls, just having time off from their chaperones was a treat. They go with us everywhere we, you know, we go even to the ladies' room. <laughs> she's not like my mother. My mother's worse. and She's like my best friend. And who knows how many new friendships were formed here today. Lisa Gregorish, News 4. People have never been forced to do anything like this before to go to a concert. They don't, they've never had to, to mail in for their tickets and then wait four to six weeks for their money to come back. They don't know if they're going to go or not going to go, and the concert's eight hours away that they're going to have to drive and go up there. You know, it's going to be a three or four hundred bill, uh, three or four hundred dollar uh, uh, bill before this concert's over. It's rising out of the sand like a modern sculpture. Steel and wood, the focal point of a musical 4th of July that Miami Beach's Ocean Drive has probably never seen. This is where the Beach Boys will play on Wednesday. And if you listened hard, you could almost hear the music rising out of the stage. So The Winter Haven Hotel across the street refuses to rent out rooms just one night for the concert, but they do offer a three-night package for $75. While an estimated half million fans are expected, the old-timers here don't seem very impressed. Terrific. Don't interest me, though. Too old for that nonsense. We're going to sit over here. Mm. Think it should be a little noisy? It'll be noisy, so a little bit, so what? Despite the Beach Boys, this year's July 4th may still not be a very festive occasion. This year's midweek 4th of July is going to prevent a lot of people from being able to take a long weekend and enjoy strolling on South Florida's beaches. And local businesses say it's going to hurt economically. Normally, uh, by this time, we should have been sold out for this upcoming weekend, and we're not. So it does hurt business. Marty Cohn was able to get a couple of extra days off this week, but he still had to go to his office first before starting his early week vacation. I was in the first thing this morning to cover some stuff, yeah. Look like you don't miss work now, though. At this position at this time, no. <laughs> Northern tourists say despite the Wednesday holiday, they came here for America's birthday party because Miami skies still beat the weather back home. Al Sunshine, News 4. Nick Bogert says the big question tonight is who will have the shovel? Off 
This is what City Fathers have in mind for us, an arena for pro basketball or indoor soccer or even hockey, a coliseum with at least 16,000 seats to be built in conjunction with a convention center with more than 200,000 square feet of space. This afternoon, developers told the city's sports authority what they had in mind. A Houston group, which now manages the Astrodome, would build an $82 million project on a parcel of land just north of downtown in the Park West Redevelopment District. We see this, this complex as sort of an extension, an expansion of your central business district downtown area where the, in effect, the whole uh, downtown area becomes part of the sports convention uh, exhibition complex. Local developer Tibor Hollow also made a bid. He presented no cost figures, but said he would also build just off Biscayne Boulevard, but further north near the Omni. Our area has been for the last 30 years steadily deteriorating. It has given or can give to the city a perfect opportunity to establish a new redevelopment district. A Dallas firm, Lincoln Properties, had the most elaborate plan presented by local attorneys and architects. It calls for a $353 million complex, including a hotel and shops, near the Miami River, just west of the existing Knight Center Convention Hall. What we are proposing to you today is, is, a, is a way to keep faith with the commitments you have made uh, to the convention center. That beautiful facility, which is sitting there by itself on the river, needs a family. The Sports Authority will get more detailed plans from its trio of developers later on in the summer and will pick a winner by year's end. Nick Bogert, News 4.